Hi there. What can PID Control do for your robot? That's what I'll be exploring in this video. If you're like me, you probably started with a simple on-off line follower and watched your robot wobble from side to side. You then upgraded to smooth proportional control, which works fine for straight lines, but you wonder if there's something better you can do with curves. In this video, I'm going to look at implementing PID using Spike Prime word blocks and explain what the P, I and D parts actually do. Finally, I will test whether adding the I and D terms results in faster completion times. Let's start with P, proportional control. With one sensor, we try to keep it right on the edge of the line, halfway between black and white. If the white reflects 100% and black 20%, our target is about 60%. We set a base speed for both motors, then adjust their speeds based on how far the sensor reading is from 60%. One motor speeds up, the other slows down, so the robot turns back towards the line. The bigger the error, the bigger the correction. The scaling factor, Kp, controls how strong that correction is. Too low, the robot reacts slowly. Too high, it overshoots and oscillates. With two sensors, we do the same thing, but keep both readings equal. That means the robot is centered on the line. Again, we speed up one motor and slow down the other, proportionally to the difference between the sensors. The Ziegler-Nichols method can be used to find the best value for Kp. You make a small disturbance and see how the robot reacts. Adjust Kp till the robot oscillates with a fixed amplitude and use half of this Kp value. With Kp at 0.4, the oscillation reduces. With 0.6, it increases. So we take 0.5 as the critical value and use half of this to move around. Before we move on to a circle, here is the P signal, which is error times Kp for a straight line. It stays very close to zero. To drive round a curve or a circle, the outside wheel will have to move faster than the inside wheel. With P control, there will have to be an error. No error gives P equals zero and both wheels will move at the same speed. If we drive clockwise around a circle, the P signal remains at about minus 20. We have a permanent error. For anti-clockwise, we have a permanent error in the other direction. The sensor on the inside of the circle is more on the line than the outer sensor. If the speed is above 60%, the robot cannot follow the circle. To add the I or integral part of PID, we first need to consider that the line follower my block is executed many times a second. If we make a variable called counter, which increases by one each time, and run the line follower for 10 seconds, we can calculate how many times per second the my block executes. We see here 188 times per second or an execution time of 5.3 milliseconds, which is quite fast. You don't have to calculate this. I have only done it to explain how the I value is made. This my block has I or integral as well as P. The I value is first set to zero, then each time the block executes, we multiply the error by Ki and add it to the old I value to give the new I value. We then add the P and I values together to give the signal which controls the motor speeds. Ki is quite small and depends on how often the my block is executed. Every 8.2 milliseconds in this case. This line graph shows the robot driving round a circle with P plus I control. The error signal is red, so with Kp set to 0.25, the light blue P value is one quarter of this. We see that the green I value starts at zero and slowly increases, which reduces the error. When the error is zero, the I value no longer changes. It remains at the value which keeps the error at zero. With P plus I, the robot could still follow the circle at 95% speed. It's interesting to let the robot drive in a circle and switch the I function on and off. Here we start with PI and see the error and P values quickly reduced to about zero. When the I is switched off, P moves to the previous I value with a corresponding increase in error. Another way we can see the effect of the I value is to have different wheel sizes, for example, 56 and 62 millimeters. 
If we follow a straight line, my block will have to move the wheels at different speeds. With P only, this will give a permanent error. With P plus I, the I value will adjust so that the error remains close to zero and the robot stays on the center of the line. To find a good value for Ki, start low, for example 0.01, .01, and increase Ki until the robot can't stay on a straight line. Use one quarter to one half of this value. So we have seen that using P only is good for following straight lines. The error is always close to zero. Driving around a circle gives a fixed error and the robot is not on the middle of the line. Using PI will correct this so that the robot can follow the line at a faster speed. Now let's add the D or derivative to the my block. The D value is first set to zero. Then we calculate the difference between the error we have now and the error last time the repeat until loop was executed. This gives us the rate of change of the error. We set old error to the current error ready for the next time. If the error is not changing, the D value is zero. But if there is a fast change, the D value will cause the robot to react strongly. This will not affect driving around a circle where the error is constant, but should help with sharp curves. So far, I have had no success with D, I think because the light sensor signals are noisy and unstable. I have tried filters and also a 50 millisecond weight in the PID calculation, but got no improvement. What I can do is explain how P, I and D function by using a test signal instead of the error signal from the light sensors. The signal ramps from zero up to 20% error and remains at 20% for a few seconds. Then there is a faster ramp back to 0% with a short wait followed by a ramp to minus 20%. After a further wait, there is a fast ramp back to 0%. To make the P signal, you multiply the error by KP. Here, KP is 0.5, so the P signal is always half the error signal. Now let's look at I, or integral. When the error ramps up, the I signal increases at a speed proportional to the error. When the error stays at 20%, the I signal ramps at a fixed rate. When the error falls to zero, the eye signal stays where it was. This helps the robot to stay on the middle of the line driving around the circle. With a negative error, the eye signal decreases at a rate proportional to the error and then remains fixed when the error is zero. The D or derivative signal is proportional to the rate of change of the error. If the error is not changing, D is zero. An increasing error gives a positive D signal for a decreasing error, D is negative. If we put all of this together, we get the PID signal. KP, KI and KD have to be adjusted to give the best results. They depend on your robot and the course you are trying to navigate. Well, I hope that helps you understand PID for line followers. At least the P and I parts work quite well. I will try to find a solution for the D term using spike prime word blocks. If you have been able to program the D part and it really works, I would be interested to hear about it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. The attached playlist has videos on other topics you may find interesting.